Welcome back. You're still watching Mutual Fund Corner here on CNBC TV 18. Well, Moti Lal Oswal recently put out a report that shows how passive funds have taken center stage in the mutual fund industry over the last few years. We've seen the segment gain market share from 1.4% of the total AUM in 2015 to over 17% today. At the end of FI18, the AUM of all passive funds combined stood at 83,000 crore rupees. This number now stands at over 7 lakh crores. This means we've seen an 8.5 times rise in just five years at a staggering CAGR of 54%. We have with us Prateek Oswal, who's the head of passive funds at Motilal Oswal AMC, to discuss about this report and everything about the passive uh, category when it comes to mutual fund investing. Prateek, uh, thank you so much for joining us on Mutual Fund Corner. Well, the numbers are mind-boggling, uh, definitely. But according to you, why do you think we've seen this big rise in passive investing? And where do you think we'll be in another five years in terms of market share? Yeah, hi. Um, thanks for having me on the show today. Um, so, you know, I think um, uh, you know, uh, if you look at passive funds as a category, you know, we've seen a lot of growth in this uh, in this side of asset management over the last five to seven years' time. You know, as your report said, this category was, you know, I would say under 20,000 crore in total assets in 2015. And today it's, you know, almost uh, you know 7.6 lakh crore. And although a lot of it, uh, you know, can be attributed to, you know, the employee pension uh, EPFO, you know, mm. they will be the largest investors in passive funds. But we've also seen that there's a lot of interest from investors coming in from all sides. So we saw huge institutional and family office interest, you know, coming into passive funds. Uh, we we saw new categories, you know, being created from nowhere. You know, you had fixed income passive funds which were virtually zero about five years ago. You had international funds which were virtually zero five years ago. Uh, you had gold and silver commodities, which were also very small. So you know you're you're seeing a lot of creation of new asset classes in this segment, and that's what's led to the rise in passive funds over the last uh, you know five to six years. I mean, I can imagine that if you've launched a micro cap passive fund, I can imagine the kind of you know demand that there is. But we'll come to that in a bit. Uh, Prateek, you know, I was going through the report, and you've said that over half of the respondents said that they increased their allocation to passive funds in just the last twelve months. What do you think has changed so materially in, you know, in this period, in the past year or so? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think one of the biggest barriers towards, you know, adoption of passive funds was actually awareness. And what you've seen with so many launches that have happened in the industry from all, you know, from a lot of AMCs coming in that the awareness towards passive funds have gone up dramatically. You know, second is investors in this survey also, and also what, you know, my experience as an investor, you know, like a lot of simple products. You know, what we've seen in the investing world is today, you have hundreds and thousands of products out there. And I think passive funds today really do a good job of, you know, making it, keeping it super simple. Uh, one of the big sort of, I would say, triggers for why we're seeing so much interest from investors is that compared to, say, five or six years ago, where there was a clear advantage of active funds over passive funds, and today, what we've seen is that you know the difference in returns is actually quite small. In fact, almost zero. So I think investors have realized that you know passive funds is not only a, a good asset class where you can you know get simpler products, but also returns are pretty much the same. So I think that's one of the big triggers that have happened over the last five years. Okay, and you know uh, we if we talk more about the report as well, interestingly, investors seem to have a preference for index funds over ETFs. This is actually opposite to what we've seen in some other countries, such as the US. Is this a trend that you think will continue in our country? Yeah, so it's very interesting because uh, you know in the US, uh, if you look, if you compare ETFs versus index funds, you know, there's act there's an obvious advantage of ETFs because they have a, a slightly bigger tax advantage, so inherent tax advantage built in into ETFs. So I think uh, you have to be really not smart to choose an index fund in the US. Whereas in India, I think, you know, both are pretty much exactly the same in terms of their tax advantage and disadvantages. In fact, you know, what we've seen uh, also from our experience is that people tend to prefer index funds because a lot of investor base does not have DMAT accounts. They want to set up SIPs. Uh, and also there's, and with ETFs in India, they tend to be very illiquid. So a lot of investors today, you know, suffer from, you know, I think buying uh, impact cost, which mm -hmm. is, you know, over buying their ETFs and selling them for less. So I think sort of the mutual fund format sort of, you know, really makes it very easy for investors to, you know, sort of invest into passive based funds. So I, uh, uh, so I think that's one of the main reasons to why we're seeing index funds becoming a lot bigger. Uh, unlike the US, you know, we believe that, um, you know, there is a very sort of, I would say, uh, investor profile that likes, you know, ETFs versus index funds. So if you look at institutions, family offices, pension funds, they tend to prefer ETFs. Whereas if you look at say retail investors, h and Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they uh, they are obviously they have a strong preference towards uh, index funds. 
Okay, got that. That's on the index funds versus ETF part. Uh, Pratik, your survey also shows that investors are most concerned with the expense ratio of a passive fund when making a decision about, you know, which one to really pick. This is then followed by the brand of the mutual fund house, AUM of the fund, and then comes the tracking error, right? I would think that the tracking error should be higher up in that list. But is there anything that you would like to tell an investor who's getting into passive funds, perhaps is not too, you know, uh, comfortable in the market and is just getting started? And what would you recommend in terms of a checklist when you're picking one fund over the other? Yeah, so, you know, I think I, I completely agree with you. You know, tracking error is super important. In fact, uh, you know, I think as, as someone who is, you know, looking at passive funds, my number one job is to make sure that the funds that we run are super efficient yeah. because, you know, because how much of sales and marketing you can do, if the funds are inefficient, you know, no one's going to invest in them. So I think tracking error is very important, but I, I, I but we still believe that uh, in terms of event, investor awareness, uh, people still, uh, you know, seem to find hard to, to understand what really tracking error or tracking difference means. So I think over time you'll see that there's a lot more awareness coming in. But uh, but as of now, I think people are really lured by the sort of expenses of, you know, I think index funds and ETFs. Uh, I think people like the fact that, you know, more of your invest money is invested into the underlying stocks. And I think over time what we've seen is that, you know, that has you know, been a main driver for why passive funds have performed uh, really well. Uh, the other reason to why, you know, costs are important is because the lower the cost, the easier it, easier it is for you to track the underlying index. You know, what we've seen is that the funds that have a lower sort of, you know, uh, inherently funds with a lower expense ratio have a lower tracking error. So I think that's one of the reasons to why also costs become very important. For investors, you know, I think, um, you know, they it's very important to understand that today, uh, the way the market has evolved over the last five years, the differences between uh, one AMC's Nifty 50 versus other uh, Nifty 50 is actually quite small. So I think the um, the recommendation to investors is, is to sort of really go with the AMC you trust. And that's very important. Uh, I think you should not go with the AMC with a lower expense ratio, but you don't have trust in them because you don't know what, what might happen in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Then because obviously you're investing for a very long time. So I think the AMC trust is very important. And uh, uh, and secondly, even between ETFs and index funds, uh, I think you should really go for something you, uh, which is convenient to the investor. I think that those are the two things which are very important. Okay, so Pratik, just tell us more within the passive space. Are you seeing high interest for mid caps or small caps or sector funds for that matter? Because we've seen several new launches in these pockets as well. And this category has done really well in the markets. Yeah, so, you know, I think uh, if you look at the current flows within passive funds, they are, they are I think, most of it is in the large cap space. Um, in fact, you know, what's, what's, what's funny is the large cap space had a, a share of about 38 or 40 percent five years ago, and today it's 60 percent. So there's incrementally also a lot more money coming in large caps, which is a nifty and next 50 is where most of the demand is. Uh, but uh, increasingly, you're seeing a lot more in, uh, sort of innovative passive funds coming in the market. You know, we were the first ones to launch a mid-cap, small-cap, you know, Nifty 500, which is an all-market fund. Uh, you have sector funds coming in, ETFs. You have also micro-cap funds. So I think, uh, you know, uh, I think if you look at, say, uh, the category, uh, you don't only really have equity. You also have fixed income. You have multi-asset passive funds. And now, hopefully, next year, you'll also have hybrid passive funds. So I think uh, there's a lot more innovation that's going to happen in the industry. And uh, we believe that, obviously, currently, most of the demand is happening in the large caps. But increasingly, you're seeing more and more flows coming into sectors, uh, as well as you know, sort of the other capitalizations, uh, which is basically you know where people want simpler products over sort of other funds. Okay, that uh, definitely makes sense, and it'll be uh, interesting to see all of these new launches. But speaking of the new launch, your microcap passive fund, how has the interest been, uh, Pratik, in this one? Yeah, so the invest, the interest has been actually quite overwhelming. Uh, you know, I think. Um, um, it was a very successful launch. Um, um, I think the AUM is uh, more than doubled uh, just in the last month, month and a half. And in fact, the, um, the fund is also up uh, about 11% already since launch. So I think the interest has been there. I think people do want access to new categories. People do want you know, in, uh, sort of innovative new funds coming in the market. And, uh, so, so, so I do feel that I think, yes, uh, you will see a lot of these launches coming in uh, over the next few years or so. Uh, I think this category may not be as big as the other categories because uh, still I think market depth may, may be limited. Uh, you know, we uh, as a fund house may have to limit our sort of, you know, uh, money that we can collect in this particular fund. Maybe not now, but maybe in three to four months time. Uh, we're obviously monitoring, you know, uh, so sort of this fund very closely. But we do believe that um, I think this category really opens up to a lot more sort of innovative funds that could come in 
uh, over the next few years. Okay, all right. Looking forward to more, more products from your fund house and the others as well. Pratik, thank you so much for joining us today and taking us through uh, everything about passive funds, actually. And uh, with that, we'll do one thing. We'll take your leave on this edition of Mutual Fund Corner today. Stay tuned for Closing Bell to take you through the last hour of trade.